Hello everybody, I am Nick Johnson and welcome to the Classical Pairings Host Challenge, brought to you by the National Bank of Indianapolis. So in this show, we usually go out and we talk to various bartenders and musicians around the city, but we're actually now in our third season of doing things a little bit differently, where people send me a challenge pairing music and cocktails or beer, and I come up with something that I think works well together. And this season, our first episode of season three, we're doing it a little bit differently still. Last time we talked to some of the leaders in classical music in the city. This season, we're going to be talking to some eight young professionals in Indianapolis, and they're going to be sending me a couple things for the challenge. First of all, they're going to send me their favorite type of music, or maybe their favorite band. It could be any genre, whatever it is that they like to listen to. Then they're going to send me their favorite local brewery and or distillery. So my job is to come up with something that pairs both the brewery and the distillery with their favorite artist, and then I'm gonna come up with some piece of classical music that I think sort of ties it all together in some way. Why are we doing this? Because I enjoy all types of music. Music is music, and it brings people joy in all sorts of different forms. Um, and I think a lot of times we're maybe even gonna find some interesting connections, uh, either artistically or conceptually, uh, between the different genres that we're gonna be looking at. So, today's guest is Joe Perrin, the Talent Programs Operations Manager at TechPoint, which is a growth accelerator for Indiana's tech ecosystem. So, let's see what Joe has for me. Hey there, this is Joe Perrin from TechPoint, chiming in for uh, classical pairings. Um, my favorite genre of music would probably be indie rock, uh, with bands like um, Peach Pit, uh, or maybe even going a little bit older in the strokes. I do also love classical music, um, the Bohemian era in France and uh, f composers like Claude Debussy and Eric Satie are fantastic. Uh, for drinks here in Indy, uh, I would have to say either Blackacre Brewing, uh, especially their beer garden in Irvington and their Chai Guy beer, or West Fork Whiskey at 17th and Bellefontaine in the Kennedy King neighborhood and their Old Fashioned is phenomenal. But yeah, thanks so much. All right, thank you so much, Joe. I, I was really excited to see this actually as my first challenge. Um, I also love most everything that you just mentioned. Um, I love the Strokes, I love French music, um, I love uh, beer, and I love uh, the West Fork whiskey. Um, in particular, I was excited. Um, so when I was when I when I decided to go ahead and spin my copy of the Strokes' "Room on Fire." Um, this is, if, if you are a classical music fan and hasn't really listened to The Strokes, or an indie rock band that started in the late 90s in New York, um, we'll be talking about some con conceptual connections here in just a minute. Um, but one of the things that people most recognize about The Strokes very quickly is that they're sort of indie rock or maybe post-garage rock, but they do some very interesting vocal timbre things um, that, uh, to some people that first hear them, what really stands out is the way that the voice sounds. Anyway, my favorite track on this album is Reptilia, and so that's what I was listening to when I was coming up with the pairing that we're going to do in just a minute. Um, for the French Impressionists, I decided to go with Claude Debussy, um, and I decided to do Prelude to the Afternoon of a Fawn, one of my favorite pieces, and, and one of many people's favorite pieces, I believe. Um, it's a, a symphonic poem from 1894. So these, these uh, pieces that we're talking about here, they're just a little over a hundred years apart. Um, and I was listening to both of these while I was trying to come up with um, a cocktail that I thought worked well. And the, the common link to me was that both of these artists are really thinking about challenging the status quo, particularly in terms of tone color or timbre that I just mentioned earlier. Debussy's music um, came onto the scene and, and basically um, it took sort of the, the sonic color of someone like Richard Wagner a little bit further and he came up with this new palette of sounds that were possible um, in really all genres of classical music. Likewise, The Strokes, um, building off other sort of indie rock bands with the late 90s, um, sort of blended kind of the punk uh, sound of the 70s with the kind of 90s wave of punk and then um, with the sort of uh, almost um, like a kinks style if you happen to know that band from the 60s um, sort of with their vocal timbre and with the writing of very fast hard driving songs so i wanted to come up with a cocktail that i thought paired with both of these getting us Debussy and the strokes and i had a lot of fun putting this cocktail together which i am calling a hipster in paris um, because 
because I thought it was funny, honestly. That's the only reason. Anyway, from West Fork Whiskey, I picked up a bottle of Old Hammer's Rye Whiskey. Um, this Old Hammer was a very old distillery in Indiana that was revived by West Fork, and you can get um, several of their products in uh, local stores. I chose the rye um, because I like rye. There's not really <laughs> necessarily an artistic reason for that. I felt like making a rye cocktail. And after listening to this music, I thought I was maybe gonna have some fun with kind of playing with a little bit with uh, rye flavorings. Uh, this particular rye is very approachable. I get, I, I get the sharpness and the spice of rye whiskey, but I also get this vanilla thing that probably comes from the wood and the aging process that some rye whiskeys you don't get. So it's a little less aggressive. Um, I would say than some local ryes, um, which I mean, each has their place in certain cocktails, but I tried to really kind of play up the smoothness and the vanilla in this cocktail, a hipster in Paris. So in the drink, my goal when listening to the, these, these two pieces, I wanted to come up with a cocktail that was an innovative take on a classic, um, which I think both of these artists did very well. I wanted to have a drink that was a little bit thoughtful, that you're gonna be sort of sipping at and contemplating, which really both of these artists, I think, kind of encourage one to do while listening. And finally, I wanted something a little bit whimsical and a little bit fun, which I think, again, both of these artists, French Impressionist and, you know, indie rock of the 2000s, I think is, is sort of whimsical in a way. I mean, maybe you wouldn't, at the time, you might not have called it super whimsical, but I think that it does sort of capture the spirit of that. So let's go through the steps of making a hipster in Paris. So we're gonna start with an ounce of this Old Hammer rye. So the cocktail that I, I said I wanted an innovative take on a classic, we've been drinking a lot of the cocktail known as a Vieux Carré, which is a uh, New Orleans cocktail that uses rye whiskey and brandy, as well as some other things, sweet vermouth and um, Benedictine. So I wanted to start with the basis of rye whiskey and brandy. So I have one ounce of rye and one ounce of brandy. I thought the brandy, especially with this specific rye, kind of brings out the, kind of enhances even the sort of vanilla notes that I was getting. Now, the unusual element is we're gonna use an elderflower liqueur. Uh, you might know St. Germain, that's probably the most popular of the elderflower liqueurs. Um, it is, this is an Italian version that, that we're using, but really any elderflower would work. It's gonna floral and very sweet and very subtle, and it sort of smooths all the rough edges really out of everything. We're only gonna do a quarter ounce of this. Um, elderflower, um, of a little bit goes a very long way with this. Add that in, there we go. We're almost done. Now we're gonna just put in one dash of Angostura bitters to add a little bit more depth to this cocktail. There we go. And then let me give that a stir. I would um, possibly consider serving this, uh, chilling it and then serving it neat. I kind of decided to serve it with one large ice cube here um, because it didn't really need a whole lot of ice melt. Um, so I didn't want to you know, dilute it too much. And then we're gonna do just a little bit of an orange peel. Um, I'm gonna use this fancy tool and I'm probably gonna do it poorly, but you get kind of a fun little skinny orange peel with this. And I'm actually doing it over the drink so that a little bit of that, um, a little bit of the oil kind of squirts out and just kind of catches the glass. So we're just gonna do like a nice long piece of this because I wanted something kind of whimsical, as I mentioned. And so it sort of, it fell straight into the glass, but you end up with, <laughs> sorry here, like this sort of appeal, which is really kind of fun. And I just actually, I was playing around with just laying it on the ice cube. Um, so you get like this sort of a look, if that can show up in either. All right, so let's give this a taste. Hmm. This is, um, you get just a little bit of spice from the rye. You get this big dose of vanilla and the sweetness from the grapes. And then the elderflower sort of ties it all together. And this drink is actually remarkably sweet, considering that every ingredient I just put in except for the orange peel is alcohol. <laughs> but you still end up with a very sweet drink. So I'll warn you that maybe like Debussy or The Strokes, it'll sneak up on you a little bit um, if you're uh, a little too loose with it. So this is fantastic. I highly recommend that you give this 
a whirl, and as you drink it, listen to a little Debussy and then listen to a little Strokes. Music is music. It brings, it makes people happy. Um, I, I actually think I, I've done well kind of uniting all these things in this one cocktail. So you can give it a try and let me know what you think. So Classical Pairings is a listener-supported program. If you like what you hear, you can text PAIR, P-A-I-R, to 202-858-1233 so that we can bring you future episodes pairing classical music with great local craft food and beverage makers. I'd also like to thank my challenger, Joe Perrin of TechPoint. You can find out more at techpoint.org. And if you're interested in being a challenger for the next season of Classical Pairings Host Challenge, you can email info at classicalmusicnd.org for more information. Finally, I'd like to thank our production assistant, Chloe Bolter, and our producer, Ezra Baker Trupiano, for their great work, as always. And of course, our friends at the National Bank of Indianapolis for their generous support. So thank you so much. Cheers. Thank you.